Hey everybody, it is Saturday night about seven o'clock. The time falls back tonight and I wish it could fall back two years ago, honestly. I hope everybody's doing well. And tonight we're gonna to talk about uh, emotional, spiritual, not physical. I usually talk about physical, but we're gonna talk about emotional soul ties and the demonic stuff that it does to us, what is the root of it? How does it come? What keeps us in bondage to unhealthy, demonic, evil relationships and how to break free from that, okay? So we're gonna talk about that. I hope everybody is doing well and great to see you guys. So let's talk about a soul tie. A lot of people don't believe in it, I do. But the emotional soul tie I'm going to talk about tonight is it can happen between you and your parent, your mother, your father, you and your sibling, you and your auntie, your grandma, your uh, children. Uh, these, these are demonic soul ties that keep you in bondage. And you guys know I do a lot of counseling. These demonic soul ties keep you in bondage to unhealthy, ungodly, evil relationships, and we're going to break it down. In 1 Samuel 18.1, the Bible talks about Samuel the prophet, and when he spoke, he said, Jonathan, his soul was bound to David, or tied to David, or knitted to David. So that means there is a soul tie. There is a godly soul tie. He loved him so much. That is different than the soul tie we're going to talk about tonight. The soul tie that Jonathan had with David in 1 Samuel 18, 1, please read it if you want biblical reference. His soul was tied to David. That means his will, his mind, and his emotions. Hey, Mark. Hey, Cindy. Hey, Norman. So you guys are jumping on. So his soul, Jonathan's soul, the Bible says, was tied to David, knitted to David, or bound to David. There was, it is your emotions, your thoughts, your will, and they are tied up into another person. So that's true fulfillment when it's godly relationships. And there are special connections that God does have by the Spirit of God to unite people together that are knit from the same cloth, okay? Same purpose, same understanding, they speak the same language, or they're from the same tribe, okay? So he values that. There's a, a, a beautiful connection. But then there is the demonic connection that most people deal with. It's very rare that you find a godly connection with someone, and when you do, you never lose it because that godly connection actually pushes you towards your calling and your will and that person behind you not only protects you Jonathan was loyal to David he protected him he was behind him he guarded his life he encouraged him he did everything he could to support David in the in the Old Testament that is a godly soul tie he even supported him above his own father, Saul, that was after David's life. He even protected him from his own father, okay? That is a godly, godly soul tie, okay? I hope you guys are following me. So soul ties can take us to the highest levels of God, God's calling and relationships or take us to the abyss, Okay, they can be they can be so demonic that Satan keeps us tied up to a particular person, whether it's a parent, a child, a sibling, a cousin, a grandparent, uh, friendships, pastors, doesn't matter who it is, childhood friends, that can be so painful and so dangerous that they're filled with such a demoralizing entrapment, okay? So let's just follow me. When we take our eyes off of God and we do life and relationships our way instead of God's way, 
That's the beginning of an ungodly soul tie. Because we desire approval and affection for someone else over God. Are you guys following me? When we do things our way, I'm going to repeat it again. And when we desire the approval and affection from someone else other than God, we have entered into the demonic realm. Okay? This is where Satan is going to get most of us. I've been there. I've been there and I want to help you because I've been there and I know what it's like to be there. Because of our need to be loved and accepted, we end up falling for a relationship or being and being a connected or tied to a relationship that's offensive, manipulating, controlling, cycles of abuse, negative thoughts, intimidation, evil behaviors. Throughout our whole life, we got listen this could be a relative this could be your parents this could be your mother this could be your father this could be your brother this could be your sister this could be your child your unhealthy child this could be your grandparent or parents this could be your best friend this could be somebody you're in love with this could be somebody you married Unfortunately, this could be someone that you're dating right now. Okay. So this kind of connection, this ungodly soul tie, it actually draws us away from God and puts us into isolation and shame because this person that you're with, again, is demoralizing you. They don't support you. They let people talk about you whatever way they will without ever standing up for you, even if it's a parent. They will let people badmouth you. They won't even listen to what you have to say because they don't value what you have to say. They value the mouths of all the naysayers around, around them and all your enemies and all your other family members, but they will not listen to you because you are the one that is the source of their, their soul, their sore spot or their anger or their bitterness or their competition. And they inside have something against you. So they don't respect you. That's an ungodly soul tie, but you keep going back to them for approval and you keep going back to them for for a validation and it gets you into this abusive cycle mentally that you are drained and you're broken and you're defeated and Satan has just got you so down because you can never get approval from this kind of person. This kind of person is controlled by Satan. They're not controlled by the Lord like Jonathan and David. Their ties together or their soul ties together in 1 Samuel 18, 1, they were bound or knit together, their souls were. So now you're bound and knit together with an ungodly, uh, un terrible tie. And these these can be formed th through adulterous affairs. I mean, sec you, I'm talking about you allowing this in your life through sex before marriage, fornication, false teaching, addictions promises like oh i love you forever and they don't i mean there's so much un ungodly entanglements through open doors to demonic forces in your life and so if this person doesn't love you back or give you the validation that you need you actually go into self-loathing and pity self-pity and self-destruction and this is what we're going to get into okay i'm going to tell you what they look like so I'm going to I'm 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 going to ask you do you have these feelings towards another person when you interact with them this is these these are signs now I'm going to give you number 1 I'm drained by this person 
all I want to do is disconnect from them, but I keep going back to them. I'm so drained. They drain me. Their, their spirit drains me. Their life, their words drain me. Their thought processes drain me. They're so critical. They're so, they, they don't support anything I have to say or do. They're just, what everybody else says is means more to them than what I say. I'm of no value to them. So when you just want to disconnect from that person, like you just wish there was nothing there, no connection. I don't care if it's a family member, a parent, a spouse, a loved one, somebody you're dating. I don't care who it is. When you're that drained, it is a sign of a demonic, ungodly, unhealthy soul tie. Number two, I can't forgive them. I can't forgive him. I can't forgive her. The memories keep playing over and over in your mind. You keep rehearsing the things that they have said to you, the things that they're doing to you, the things that they've done to you. You keep rehearsing them because there's an ungodly connection or ungodly soul tie that you have for them. Like again, not like Jonathan and David that had a godly, uh, God-fearing, God-ordained soul tie, but this is an ungodly demonic soul tie with you, okay? Next one. You wonder about this person and you want to constantly check on them. You constantly want to see if they're okay. Now, they don't care if you're alive or dead. They don't care if you exist. Like, they don't care nothing about you. They're so self-absorbed. But you are constantly wanting to check on them. If you don't hear from them, you go crazy. If you don't know if they're dead or alive, you go crazy. If you don't know where they're going to the store, if they didn't answer your phone call, you go crazy. If they didn't text you back within two minutes, you go crazy. If they're an addict and they're drinking or they're doing drugs and you can't locate them, you go crazy and you call everybody else to find them. Those are demonic soul ties, okay? The demons are drawing you in to get you connected to something dysfunctional and, and ungodly. The Bible says to honor your father and mother, but it does not say to participate in their evil. The Bible says to put other people above yourself, but it does not say to participate in their evil. The Bible says to love your enemies and to pray for them and to do good for them, but it does not mean to participate in their evil. The Bible says forgive your enemies. It does not mean to allow them to continue to abuse you and to be an emotional doormat. That is sin. To allow dysfunction and poison is sin. We are, not, we are not to tolerate evil in our society, in our nations, in our government, in our cities, in our towns, in our homes, or in relationships. It is a sin to tolerate evil and abuse. It is sin. Listen, I tolerated it my whole life. I'm done now. I've been done a while, okay? It is a sin to tolerate abuse in your own family and evil in your own family. You guys, you know, I get, when I feel the Holy Spirit, I, I, I have, it's hard to breathe sometimes. Okay. I'm on pins and needles with anxiety of fear of saying the wrong thing when they enter the room or when I talk to them on the phone. When you talk to somebody that, and you have an ungodly soul tie, you continue to contact them. You don't even know why, what's drawing you. But you continue to contact them, and every time you talk to them, you walk on pins and needles with anxiety. You're afraid to enter into a room with them, or you're afraid to talk on the phone with them because you know they're going to go off on you, or they're going to react to you in an abusive way, whether it's hanging up on you or giving you the silent treatment or screaming and yelling at you, or whatever it is, and turning everything around on you and deflecting. That is an ungodly soul tie that you keep putting yourself in that position to contact this person. I wonder what, because you're in your loneliness or whatever it is that you're feeling, it is just an ungodly tie and you keep calling this toxic person. The next one. You're plagued with, you can't sleep well. And you got thoughts about him or her in your mind constantly going. That's a part of a bitter root as well and an unforgiveness. Because you don't know what keeps drawing you to that parent or that child or that relationship or that spouse. 
that abusive spouse or that ungodly friend or boyfriend or girlfriend you don't know what's drawing you but you're you're plagued with insomnia and thoughts about them constantly and 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 thinking about how bad they are would you keep putting yourself in the position to constantly contact them that's an ungodly soul tie or if this person makes you feel like their problems are your fault let me break that down for you when you're in a family and you're a scapegoat you are the target so everything that happens in the family what all bad things that happen in the family are your fault there's nothing you can ever do that's good enough to win that that family member over it starts with the parents the parents are the narcissist they train all the other siblings how to come up against a scapegoat and the scapegoat is the person that gets blamed for everything bad in the family things are hidden in the family things are kept from you you're not invited you are the evil person even though you're the good person you're the evil person because your family is the evil they're evil if they were good and, and you're righteous they would walk with you they were they went out from among you because they were not of you had they had been of you they would have continued to walk with you in the Lord okay you guys following me now if you're crazy and you cause problems that's different in your family if you're stealing from them if you're doing drugs if you're getting drunk if you're yelling at them if you're a thief I don't care that's not a godly thing and you call yourself a Christian that's not what I'm talking about I'm talking about the righteous are as bold as a lion if you're a righteous person in your family and you are the center of the harm because they hate you because you're good and they're evil and they know that they're not right and you are they're jealous of your walk with God just like Joseph and his brothers so let me continue but you keep going to them you keep going to this family and you keep getting hit because you think oh my gosh or if you're because it's a godly thing or if you're married to a man or a woman that's abusive it's usually men but there are women that are abusive and this man is calling you out of your name and this man is beating you up and you go out and get him out of jail or you go back to him after you tell the church and everybody how wonderful he is and he just doesn't know any better because you're his mama now you play the child mother child role of rescuing and enabling a person that's the toxic soul ties I'm talking about the next one you avoid telling your friend that you had lunch coffee or any other social activity with another person because the person you're with is so possessive they got to know where you're at what you're doing at all times why aren't you with them why aren't you sharing time with them these are toxic friendships okay toxic relationships but you keep going back why do you keep going back I want to break it down you next one you feel responsible for someone else's happiness you can't be happy unless somebody else is happy that is a demonic and it's a demonic soul tie okay if if somebody's not happy and you can't be happy there's something sick inside of you that needs to be broken I've been there you guys I can relate to this and so God set me free you feel responsible for them and then your well-being is dependent on their behavior so if somebody calls you if your mom or your dad calls you and they hang up on you and they're drunk or they're doing drugs or they're just belligerent or they disrespect you or they just don't support you or validate you or encourage you or affirm you or stick up for you or protect you your parent doesn't do that then you go down and you go down into the pit and then you go doing shooting drugs and you're drinking or you're going sleeping around or you're just you know you can't live life without approval from your parent you know the Bible clearly tells us this and this is in 2nd Corinthians uh, 5 16 so the Bible says so we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view or from now on we regard no one according to the flesh that means you you got to take the labels off you got to take the mother label off you got to take the father label off you got to take the sister label off the brother label off the auntie 
label off, the husband label off, the, the wife label off, the best friend label off, the friendship label off, your children label off. You got to take the labels off and start, stop judging people according to the flesh. Because now that we're in the spirit and we're born of the spirit of God, we no longer judge people according to the titles that they have. Jesus said, who is my mother and my brothers? Those that do the will of my father. Those are your true, that's your true family. But your natural family, you can't judge them according to the flesh. You got to judge them as souls. When you see them through the eyes of God, you see why they are the way they are. It's not your fault. You've done nothing to make that happen. They are the way they are because they're apart from God and they've got such trauma in them that you are the scapegoat. You are the one that they will abuse. So you have got to pray for them according to the eyes of God that God would visit them and set them free from the hand of the enemy. God will give you a love for them, but, but there'll be a relief for you as well. A relief for the burdens that you carry on your shoulders. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And you will find rest for your soul, which is your will, your mind, and your emotions. That means you're going to sleep like a baby. You're going to, you're going to be free every day. You're not going to, whether they live or die, it's not your responsibility. Whether they love you or don't, it won't affect you because you get your validation from Jesus himself, who is now your father, your parent. He said, when your mother and father forsake you, I will take you up. He's going to coddle you like a mother and father. I mean, he's going to love you like his own child. He's, he's going to be the very thing that you never had growing up. He's going to affirm you. I mean, the other day I was in prayer and I was like, you know what the Lord told me? Despite of how my family treats me, he said, you are a wonderful daughter and you're a wonderful sister. And I was like, God, you are just so good to affirm me because he knows, he knows that you can do all the good and they'll keep taking and taking and they'll keep pounding you because this is what happens when you are yoked up with ungodly demonic soul ties, even in your family, even in your marriage, even in friendships even in churchships. You guys following me? I hope I'm going to help some of you guys. I know I am. I, I know I am. Today I'm driving and God, you know, I have no parent that loves me and I, I am alone. And so I was driving today and when you're, when you don't have any love from natural family, you feel alone. Even if you're still with the Holy Spirit, there are times that you are struggling with the world and you're struggling with things going on and I'm driving on the road and I'm like all this traffic's coming at me and I'm being careful how I'm driving and I'm, I get scared sometimes, you know, and, and the Lord just spoke to me and he says, you're not alone. I will never leave you or forsake you. I was like, you know what, Lord, I am protected. I'm not alone. I'm driving but I'm not alone. You're with me and you, your eyes are with me wherever I go. You're amazing. Even if you're alone, I'm telling you guys, the devil is out to kill you and forgive your enemies. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know they're being used by Satan. They're so blinded and they come in packs. It's generational curses. They don't know what they're doing. They know they're destroying you, but they don't know what, what controls them. That's why Jesus said on the cross, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. While we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. Next thing, you feel responsible for this person's happiness. Someone else's happiness is not dependent on you, okay? You are not responsible for anyone else's happiness. You can't make anybody happy. Misery loves company, but excuse me, an, an ungodly soul tie, they will make you feel responsible for their happiness. Are you following me? If your son or daughter calls you as a parent or your husband or wife calls you, well, or your friend calls you, well, if you would just stop doing this, then my life wouldn't be so miserable with you. They don't have to talk to you. 
You don't have to talk to them. Why do you keep talking to them? They make you feel responsible for their loneliness, their misery, their dysfunction. In fact, they create an atmosphere that pushes everybody away. And nobody wants to be around them because they play the martyrdom. They play the martyr. This could be somebody you're married to, your sister, your brother, your aunt, your uncle, your parent, your spouse, your daughter, your son. They, they create the martyrdom syndrome that they tell everybody nobody loves them. Nobody in their family loves them, but they're not willing to step up and take responsibility for the choices they've made in their own life and relationships. They want to feel that way because they're broken. And they're broken because something happened to them in their life through trauma. And that trauma could be through a parent. It could be through their children. It could be through their spouse. It could be through siblings, aunts, uncles. Something happened to them in their life that they feel like nobody loves them because they're in their tra trauma situation. So they shut everybody out and now you feel responsible for their happiness because they make you feel responsible. So you're getting sicker and sicker and they're sick too. They're physically getting sicker. You're physically getting sicker. You're emotionally sick. They're emotionally sick. You're both dysfunctional. You're both destroying each other. This is an ungodly soul tie. Next one. Your well-being is dependent on another person's behavior. You cannot allow another human being to have that much power over you. The only person that should have that much power over you is God, the Holy Spirit. That's it. No human should have any power over you. Zero, except the Lord God himself. Or else you make that person your idol. When they're not saved or they're they're in addictions or they're uh, destructive behavior towards you or it's your spouse and they're beating you and you just keep staying in that situation over and over again thinking that somehow if you're just good enough, if you're nice enough, if you could just walk straighter lines, if you could just look better and prettier, if you could just lose, you know, 20, 50, 100 pounds or if you could just um, just cook better or you know, their eyes wouldn't be wandering or they wouldn't push you around or your mother or your father would love you if you could just get a title and go to school and finish school or if something would happen, you know, that, that would bring acceptance and validation to your life with them, then, then you feel like you're okay once they validate you. And that validation, it goes on through your whole life until they die. That person... I've heard there's millions and millions of stories that that person died and they still never got validated from their parent or parents, their spouses, their children, their siblings, their family members, and they're still searching for that validation that will never happen. So they end up going to counselors and people that will give them Xanax and antidepressants and all kinds of drugs to cover up a spiritual root of the problem. The spiritual root is you got to get the eyes of God and have healing and get the love from the Lord that no one else will ever, ever give you, not even your children. Take, take, we know no man after the flesh anymore. Take the labels off these people and see them as human beings, spirit beings that are on their way to destruction or that are broken and that you cannot fix. Only God can fix them and you can only pray for them. I pray this is helping you. The next one, I'm numb over the se over the severed relationship and I can't move on. You're numb and you can't move on because this person is not talking to you. Could be a parent not talking to you. You can't move on. This could be an ex-husband, an ex-wife that's not talking to you and you can't move on. They divorced you. This could be your child. Your child's not talking to you and you feel like you can't move on. This could be your sibling that's not talking to you and you feel like you can't move on. This could be a friend, a best friend that you had and they stopped talking to you and you can't move on. When you get to this, these are ungodly soul ties. When you get to this level of attachment again not like first samuel 18 1 when 
David's soul was tied to Jonathan or so to Jonathan. They were knitted together, their souls connected, and they were tied together. I'm talking, that's a godly soul tie. I'm talking about ungodly soul tie. So, how, what do people do to release themselves? Again, they get on drugs, antidepressants, painkillers, shoot up heroin, cocaine, alcoholics. Satan is just crafted everything right into place. You can be a thousand miles away from that person and, and, and the issue is still there and you get a new hobby or you take a vacation or you change your hair color or you start working out at the gym and the issue is still there. It's like this deep seated thing. It's like, it's so, it's so harmful and so hurtful and you're so broken, right? And you need God's healing power over your life because that's all that's going to work. We don't have to be subject to self-destructive relationships. I don't care if it's with a pastor. There are abuse. There are spirit. There is spiritual abuse out there. I don't care who it is because the Bible says you have the authority. First, you got to get saved. Then you got to you got to repent, get saved, confess your sins renounce Satan's kingdom and then you have got to be you've got to understand that you don't have to subject yourself to self-destruction destructive relationships you might be the one that's destructive you might be the one that's causing the destruction that's listening to me there's hope for you because God can set you free Jesus came for the unrighteous not the righteous he came for the broken not the whole the whole don't need a physician. It's the broken that need a physician. He's the great physician. He's the mighty counselor. And you guys start going to these secular counselors that are making you worse. And they've got human philosophy that's going to take you down a wrong road. These ungodly soul ties have to be broken down. The Bible says pulling down every vain imagination, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Taking captive every thought. See, this is the battleground right here. Maybe you need a Christian counselor. Maybe you need me. Maybe you need somebody else that can help you to work through this demonic soul ties. Because if this person is making you so sick, they will not receive your love. They will not allow for you to love them. They will not allow counsel from you. They will not allow anything healthy from you. They just want to bring you down because they're broken. you got to let these people go. They're broken souls that were broken for many years many years and they will be until they die unless they get help from the holy one of israel jesus himself jesus came to heal the brokenhearted if you're brokenhearted right now jesus is standing at the door of your heart and knocking are you going to let him in jesus is knocking on the door of your heart he's knocking he's saying will you let me in so i can suck with you so i can break bread with you so i can minister to you so I can speak to you. I can heal you. I can bring deliverance to you. You got to get your mind off all these people that have hurt you or that one person. You have to ask God to break it by the blood of Jesus, that soul tie, that ungodly soul tie. You got to repent of it because it's idolatry. You have put them before God. They consume you instead of God. They take over your emotions instead of God. You have got to put them before, you've got to put the Lord before them, okay? This is for your own well-being. Listen, God can't use you when you're bound up by the devil. Because the devil is taking over your, he's affecting your mind, your your spiritual walk with the Lord. Your, you can't forgive, and even if you forgive, you have the spirit of rejection in you. You got this, you got this spirit of rejection that, that if you're rejected, then you're no good. Then you get angry. You got then more spirits come in, spirit of anger. And then the devil just takes over and he makes you angry at God. And then he puts you out in the world. And now what? Now you're serving the devil for real. That's this was Satan's agenda all along to have you this with this ungodly soul tie. These are demons. If if it's your family, break it off. Go no contact with your family. They're they're making you like a sinking ship in the ocean. They're just sitting on this ship and they're taking you down with them because they're on their way down because you don't think like them and you're godly and you're holy and you're righteous and they're not and they think you're crazy and messed up and a fake they're be they're being used by satan do you understand 
They're being used by Satan. Let them go. Just like with Abraham, the Lord said, leave your kin and your folk. Leave and go into a new land that I can make you the father of many nations. He was told to leave everything so that he, God had a different plan for him. And if you are tied to this ungodly soul ties, it's going to keep you in your home or your state or your city or your country, whatever it is, bound up. And when God, when God wants to take you out and put the solitary in families, God says that he will put those that are alone in families. You won't be released to leave because you're so bound up by your own kindred and your own families. I pray this is helping somebody. Same thing with marriages. You know, the Bible says I'm not endorsing divorce. I never do unless it's abuse, abandonment, or cheating. Okay? Porn too. I don't endorse it. Otherwise, I do. God does not make us doormats. That is not his objective in life. You know, when the Bible says, if one person slaps your cheek, give him the other also, he doesn't say, let him slap you. That's not what he says. Look it up in the Greek. Okay, I'm stuck. All right, look it up in the Greek. If they give you one side of your cheek, give them the other two. That, does, that doesn't mean let somebody hit you. Ladies, gentlemen, you know what that means? That means don't return insult for insult. That means if they slap you, that's a Jewish term. If they insult you, don't insult them back. Give them the other cheek to insult you too. Let them keep putting you down. Let them keep putting you down to everybody else. They don't want to listen to you. They don't want to hear nothing you got to say. They believe everybody else before you because they're not loyal. They're not loyal because they don't belong to Jesus if they had been of us, they would have continued with us, but they went out from among us to expose that they were never of us. Okay? All right. Pursue godly relationships, God-honoring relationships, like a, like a Jonathan and David relationship, where this person connected, tied to you, 1 Samuel 18, 1, will support your ministry, will not bring any harm to you, but will by their lifestyle, by their words, encourage you, affirm you. Listen, if you got family members and you got friends or you got spouses that are not encouraging you or dating somebody, not encouraging you, affirming you, behind you, got your back, loyal to you, that means that somebody they will never let anybody say bad things about you behind their back. That's what it means. Loyalty. Just like Jonathan was with David. They will never allow the the enemies, your enemies, to speak bad about you. Not unlike the people that you guys are yoking up with that are allowing your enemies to badmouth you and collecting other enemies to badmouth you so that you can be destroyed. You can have a parent even that does that. You can have a sibling that does that. You can have a spouse that does that. And you can have a best friend that does that. All of those Take the label off because we know no man after the flesh anymore. Take the label off and see them for what they are. They are Satan's agents. They're the demonic agents set in your life to destroy you. If you're born again, your family is the people of God. Because they're all going to die one day and their jealousies and their hatreds and everything's going to go to go right to the grave and to the hell that they're going to. And you wasted your whole life so entrenched with ungodly soul ties and you wasted your years of the promised land you're like the children of israel that 11 day journey became 40 years and you still are not doing what god's called you to do because you're so engrossed in the emotional pain of what people are doing around you let them go let them go it's not that important we live for an we live for eternity we're driven by eternity. That means everything we do here is what is how we're going to be judged in eternity. This little vapor of life is all you got to show God how you're going to spend eternity. Either in heaven or in hell, you're going to have rewards or lose rewards. Listen, the Bible clearly tells us 
that we should be terrified. We should be in terror of God because we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. These are for the believers. And we're going to be judged for what we do in our bodies, whether it's good or bad. There's still judgment coming because we know the terror of God. We persuade men. This is serious stuff. Get away and be, you'll be so happy. Give yourself two or three weeks. You'll be so relieved, even though it feels weird to not talk to your father or your mother or your sister or your brother or your aunt or your uncle or that child or your children. I don't know what it is that you guys are dealing with, but if you are righteous of the Lord, born again, filled with the spirit, changed, sanctified, walking with the Lord, you will be so relieved in two or three weeks. You'll be like relieved. You'll feel guilty at first. Like, wow, this is not normal. Well, God's trying to deliver you from your normal because your normal is abnormal. Your normal is unhealthy and ungodly soul ties. And God is going to give you that peace that you will no longer feel responsible for your parents, your siblings, your, your children, your, your, cousins, your aunts and uncles, listen, it is their choice if they want to be serving the devil. God loves them more than you do. It is their choice that they serve Satan. You cannot save anybody. In fact, Jesus was not even welcomed in his own hometown. He couldn't even do miracles. And you think you're going to do miracles in your family? They don't even want you. The churches don't even want you because most of them are lukewarm. Your friends are leaving on the wayside. They don't want you because you're on fire and they're lukewarm. Let them go. Stop crying. Weep for their souls, but don't weep for the loss. Don't weep for the loss of a person losing friendship or relationship with you. That's their choice. If they were of God, they would be walking with you. But they went out from among you to expose that they were not of God. Had they been of God, they would continue to walk with you. They, Jesus said, if you don't gather with me, you scatter. Either you're for me or against me. Same thing with a true, spirit-filled, Bible-believing Christian. Either they're with you or they're against you. Either they're for you or they're scattered. That's why they... Support the people that badmouth you. That's why your mom and dad supports the people that badmouth you. Because they're badmouthing you too. That's why your siblings support the people that badmouth you. Because they're badmouthing you too. That's why your friends support the people that badmouth you. Because they're badmouthing you in private. That's why they don't support you in public. That's why they don't share your posts. That's why they don't put likes on it. That's why they don't encourage you. To keep doing it and they're proud of you and they're behind you. So what do you do? You let them go and you turn to the Lord your God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of the Bible who is alive. And you allow for him to minister to you. Okay? You allow for him to be your parent. Because he delights it. He wants you to depend on him. It's like, it's like if you go to your parent and you say, because that, that's a bad parent. If you go to your parent and say, mom, dad, I'm going to, um, I'm going to jump off this cliff and I'm going to go into the rocks a thousand feet down. Is a parent going to say, no, don't do it. Let me protect you. I'm not letting you do it. Or is that parent going to let you do it? See, God wants you to depend on him to know that he will not allow for you to get harm to, or to, to bring harm on yourself, okay? We bring harm on ourselves because we don't listen to God and his counsel. When God shows you things, even your parents, even your children, I don't care who it is, take the label off. We know no man after the flesh anymore. Take the label off. You can honor your parents by honoring God. But you don't, when you're of age, you don't have to do what they tell you to do. You don't have to cater to them. Okay? You honor God 
You honor your parents by honoring God and living an upright lifestyle. Okay? I'm done now. I hope this helped you. I know you guys are suffering out there because I'm getting calls from so many of you guys um, all around the world. Forgive. Keep forgiving. Even if you don't feel like you've forgiven them, do it out loud. God gave you a mouth. Keep saying, Lord, I forgive them. Bless them. Because you got to pray for your, your family. you got to pray for your friends, your pastors, your, your, your siblings, your your uh, spouses, you got to pray. God says, pray for your enemies. Do good to them. But do not put yourself in harm's way. Ble pray blessings over them means God is going to deal with them. God can't bless something that's cursed. Did you hear what I said? He causes rain to, rain to come down on the just and on the unjust. It is the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. It is God's love. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I did not deserve to be saved. There's nothing that I had that God needed for me. Nothing. I was the epitome of darkness. What does God want with me? I had nothing to offer him. But God, with his great mercy, while I was a sinner, died for me. He saved me and he saw something worthwhile in me to rescue me. He saw me pitiful, a soul going to hell, lost that Satan was going to kill. I was, he had pity on me and his compassions and his mercies are new every morning. This is for the victims and the perpetrators tonight. His mercies are new every morning. Victims become perpetrators because of their own abuse. That's why you see people that are sexually abused in their childhood become pedophiles that's why you see little children that are beaten by their parent become abusers that's why you see people that are sexually violated become homosexuals satan gets in there through trauma bonding he goes in there through trauma and the perpetrator becomes the healer too and it is just a sickness of darkness that Satan works in the spirit realm that we cannot see. So we have to start by forgiving and repenting of unwholesome, ungodly bonds and soul ties and pursue godliness and holiness, which without no man will see the Lord. God says pursue holiness or no man will see the Lord. This no joke. I hope this helped you. God bless you. I I put my um I put my website 501c3. If you guys got blessed, please support my ministry. The word, the gospel is free, but to get the gospel out is not free. Okay? So I if you support my ministry, it would be greatly appreciated. There's a PayPal button there for donation. Get my books. I, I forgot to bring them out again. The beautiful God and or the be beautiful deception and the fake God available all over the world. This is going to help you of satanic agendas in the end times. God bless you. I pray this helped you and please share this video. God bless.